welcome to And So Much More. I am your host, Cami Smith, and we are here today to talk about swim safety. Now it's August, we're, we're like more than halfway through the summer, and I think that people, you know, if your kids have been swimming all summer, you kind of start to let your guard down. You're like, you know, go into the pool becomes rhythmic and you just pick up your book. And, um, and outside of that, I think there's just, there's still so much more. We still have to stay so vigilant when it comes to swim safety, water safety, aquatics. Um, and so today we have with us Carrie Kofer. And he is the Associate Executive Director of our Jamerson YMCA, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Um, branch Director. And so I'm so thankful to have you here with us today. And um, Centra Partners with the YMCA. Um, I love the YMCA. I just, I feel like it's such an incredible organization that touches so much of our community. Um, and I have just been hearing so much about what you guys have been doing as far as swim safety and aquatics. And so... Um, I want you to share all your wisdom with us. Okay. <laughs> but first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I've been with the YMCA for going on 16 years. July was literally just 16 years. I, I love just it. hit. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, started in aquatics as a lifeguard. Um, I was a senior in high school, needed a job. Um, didn't go to the beach that year because I needed to get the certification. Oh, wow. So I took the certification. What a sacrifice. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and then, you know, spent 12 years in aquatics, moving my way up to a supervisor and director at our downtown location, um, okay. spent two years in membership and then got moved to our Jamerson family YMCA location and, you know, worked my way up senior program director and now associate and kind of oversee the aquatics program, um, okay. competitive swim team and some other departments there as well. I love it. Do you still kind of get to get in there? I'm, I'm assuming you probably don't lifeguard because you guys have people who do that. Correct. Um, but you, do you still just kind of get in there and to try to be a part of hands-on side of things? Yes. So, I mean, I get in the pool and swim myself just to stay fit. Yeah. Um, but if they ever need me, I will definitely jump in, keep my certification up to date. Um, we have monthly in services with our lifeguards to go over training and safety, and I always attend those. Oh, I love that uh, to yep. keep them kind of sharp on yep, their game. Yeah, exactly. Their skills um, and just to be in the know of what's going on. But you know, always being aware. And if you see something, say something. So we always want to make sure everybody is is safe. You know, around yeah. the water. I so, love that, and yeah. that kind of partly answered it's my first question, which is. Like, what is the overall approach to swim safety specifically at the Y? Um, and so uh, you've shared a little bit about that. And I, what was that phrase you just said? Stay. If you see something, if say something. If you see something, say something. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, so being proactive versus reactive. Yes. And I, I think that's something even for those who are listening um, to just keep your eye out, you know, wherever you are, where you're swimming. I mean, we want our lifeguards to be doing that for yeah. sure. Um, but sometimes we kind of passively are like, well, there's a lifeguard. So exactly. Um, yeah. The more eyes, the better. But yeah, I love that. See something, say something. Yep. Tell my kids that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what what else do you guys incorporate into your approach towards swim safety? Yeah. So we offer group swim lessons um, to, to individuals um, that, that want to take lessons for any age, starting at six months all oh, the way wow. up to you know adults. I mean, they can be 70, 75, 80 years old oh, wow. if they've never taken swim lessons before and want to learn how to swim. Um, we offer, also offer um, financial assistance. For those individuals okay. that can't afford swim lessons, um, we don't want the, the finances to be a barrier for them to not be able to take you know, yeah. swim lessons. Absolutely. You, you think about the world and it's 71% water. So almost everywhere you go, there's creeks, there's yes. rivers, there's lakes, there's oceans. Um, so not only being safe in the water, but around the water as well. Because yes, you get in the water to be taught a swim lesson, yeah. but to be safe around the water as well. Because yeah. um, you're not necessarily in a river, in a creek, you're normally around them. Yeah, so to be it's safe true. around around them as well. Oh, that's smart. I actually didn't even think about that. You know, it's not just when you're swimming. It's yes. when you're in the area. Yep. Um, now, you talked a little bit about the financial assistance, and uh, but we also, when we were pre-gaming pre a little bit, we talked about the outreach swim program. So tell me a little bit about that. Yes, so we offer outreach swim lessons as well um, to underserved youth in our community, whether it be schools or other organizations that okay. serve youth. Um, so we target those, those at risk youth, um, for swim lessons Very and, cool. you know, we offer them, we have a curriculum called SAW, which is safety around water. Okay. Um, and they get eight 30 minute lessons, um, you know, within a four week time frame or an eight week time frame. Mm -hmm. Um, and they get taught, you know, not only how to swim, but safety around water as well as to what to do around the water and, and things like that. Yeah. So safety around water key. Yes. See something, say something. We're already have we have all these little nuggets that I hope you guys are maybe writing down or just storing somewhere. Uh, yes. Um, so how do you encourage? I mean, it's a little bit of the same question, but you know, 
do you guys go out to the community often as well, or do many of these things happen inside the YMCA's doors? So, so like, normally, how do you inform the community to do this? Yeah, so they normally happen within our doors. I reached out to different organizations, schools, and again, organizations that are serving youth, um, and let them know that we offer this, oh, and good. we have buses that go pick these kids up. So it's I even, it's no barrier to the parents as well. We provide yeah. transportation. So especially when they get out of school, it's like an after school program. We go and pick them up, uh, bring them to the Y, give them a swim, les swim lesson, give them a healthy snack, okay. and then take them home. So wow. if transportation is an issue, we, we cut that barrier out. That's incredible. So access, it, I mean, I think that is one of the number one issues I know in a health healthcare system. That it's just a big deal because a lot of times the people who need the most have the hardest time getting to where yes. the need can be met. Um, so that's awesome that you guys bust that in. And then you talked about um, the the Summer Y program. So, okay, my kids have gone to the Summer Y program for like the last four years. And yeah. my son has aged out and it just makes me really sad. Um, and so my daughter stays home with him now. Okay. Um, but like that's where they learned to swim. Like they, yes. they went into there, they had to take the swim test if they wanted to go down the slide. Yep. and. That is an incredible incentive. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. And so they did. That's where they learned to swim. And I remember when I was young, I grew up not in Lynchburg, back in Jersey. Um, but I took swim lessons at, at the Y. But I had no idea that you could take swim lessons at six months. Yes. That's insane. Yeah. So it's like a mommy and me, baby and me class, our uh, parent and child, um, where they start at six months old, all the way up to oh, three years old. So smart. And then they move to a preschool um, level and then you know, on up to, to teen and adult. Uh, Very cool. But and again, they're not learning how to swim at six months, but it's getting them comfortable in the water. Yeah. You know, when they're taking a bath or in the sink, things like that, you know, if they're in the pool, it's just getting them comfortable in the yes. water, learning how to semi kick their feet, move their arms. Um, so in case they fall in, once they get older, or if they're near water, have a pool, yeah. then they can somewhat stay afloat or get back to the side of the pool. Yeah. They don't blink. You know what I mean? There's yes. some type of anchor in there of what can I do right now yeah. in this crazy. And there's no fear in kids. They were just running and jump right in the water. Oh, I can't tell you how many <laughs> times before my son learned to swim that I was fully clothed jumping into the pool because he would just yep. run and jump. Because, you know, you put the it takes time when you get to the pool or you go to the beach, like the swimmies go on and then the sunscreen goes on and you do all the things. But turn around for one second. And they bolt and they jump in that water. Yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. And so um, that's very cool that you're even equipping these these very young kids just to have a mindset of what to do yeah. around water. And well, it's knowledge for the parents too. When it's a parent-child class, you're teaching yeah. the parents oh, what to cool. do around the water and you know life jacket and just just safety in general. Yeah. What to do because a lot of them have pools, or they're near lakes, ponds, rivers, and they're yeah. in their backyard or know somebody that that, that has that on their land. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, it takes a split second and, you know, a lot of times drownings do happen where there is supervision. They're not yes. necessarily just by themselves. Yeah. So, um, not that the lifeguard wasn't paying attention, but, um, you know, there's other people around too. So just always being vigilant. Yeah. Um, and we talk about drowning and, you know, like that, it, like we talk about, we're here to talk about swim safety and, um, and safety around the water. And, and it's just, for me, anyway, as a mom, just being completely transparent, like that is a huge fear. Just like, where is my child when they go to events when I'm not there? Who is watching them? I want them to be equipped to be safe on their own as just a next step for those who are there watching yes. them. Um, because, and I wrote, I got some of these statistics um, and they, they blow my mind. Yep. Um, 40% of drowning deaths among children ages 5 through 14 occur in natural water. So when they say natural water, they mean like lakes and oceans yep. and things, right? Yep. Okay. Um, more than half of fatal and non-fatal drownings occur among people 15 years and older. Um, and that's the natural open water, lakes, rivers, and oceans. Approximately 85% of people who drowned while boating in 2022 were not wearing a life jacket. And you talked about a life jacket. And yes. And I, it's, it's a, an inconvenience. It can feel like an inconvenience. Yes. Um, I was just out this weekend at Holiday Lake and we were on paddle boats and they gave us all life jackets and it was so hot and you're just like sweating in this life jacket and you're just thinking, this is not what I want to be doing right now. Yeah. Um, but I kept thinking about having this conversation today and yeah. I'm like, you know, there's a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that 
And what are, I mean, do you see this a lot? Like, do kids have to wear anything in the pool at the Y? Yes. Yeah, so if they have to take a swim test every okay. time they come in. If they don't pass, um, then they do have to wear a life jacket for safety reasons. How do they feel about that? <laughs> um, they're kind of upset about it. You know, they're, yeah. they're not happy about it, but it's, it's for safety. Yeah. It's for their safety, you know, their parents' safety. It's our safety, other people's safety, um, you know, versus having five or six kids that didn't pass a swim test just kind of hanging out in the kiddie pool or the, the, yeah. the shallow end. They need need a life jacket for, for safety reasons. And we give a swim test to individuals every single time they come in because we don't know what they have been doing before. They could be tired, had practice, been in the heat. Um, oh, that's so, really So, you know, no offense to the kid. We just want to make sure they pass the swim test every yeah. single time because we can't, we can't assume. We yeah. don't want to take any risks. Now, this one struck me. Drowning is the leading cause of death for children one to four years old. Yes. And the second leading cause of unintentional injury death for children five to 14 years old. Um, and so there are so many things out there because, I mean, this is a fear and I'm not trying to instill a fear or an anxiety yeah. in anyone. Yeah. But you, like this knowledge is out there. The stories are out there. You see the pain in the people around you who have experienced this at some point in their life mm-hmm. by someone they love. Um what are some things that are floating out there that need to be debunked or need to be like re reinstilled? Like, okay, I hear it depends on the color of your bathing suit. Like you don't want to wear like a blue or a purple or those, those colors that are the same color as the water. They tend yeah. to be the same color that the bottom of the pools are, are painted. Um, you want to wear those bright colors in the pool in the ocean in wherever. Yeah. Um, I put my kids in bright colors because I just don't want to, like, I want to see them when we're out and about. Yeah. And so it translates. It makes sense. Like yeah. it helps you find them in the water. So what are things like that, that you can in- either encourage or say that's completely ridiculous and not true at all? Yeah, of course. So I think natural water, is always good to have a life jacket when you're out on a boat, you're out in the ocean, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, is to definitely have a life jacket, whether you can swim or not, you feel like you're a strong swimmer. It may be safe to have a life jacket in yeah. case the boat flips over, you get too far out, you know, because mm-hmm you eventually will get exhausted and be tired and you can only float but for yes. so long. So Okay. Uh, on that point, <laughs> paddling that paddle um, board for two hours. And I kept thinking, don't lock your knees, don't lock your knees. Because I'm like, if I pass out yeah. and I'm not wearing a life jacket, because I am a strong swimmer, but it's not, a, a not if I'm yeah, completely exhausted, which I was after a certain point. It's yeah. all work. Um, so that's a good point. So keep the life jacket on, even if you think I'm a great swimmer, I don't need this. Yes. Yep. Um, never swimming alone. Always going with a buddy. We even teach that to the kids and camp is always being with somebody when you're swimming. Um, that way that person could potentially help you if you were to you know, slip yeah, in, fall in, um, a situation like that. Um, learning how to swim. I know it's a fear for a lot of people, but you know, 70, yeah. 71% water, the world, it's a lot of water. It's around everywhere. That's a great, um, and you know, I think a lot of people there. have had traumatic experiences and things have happened, but if they can semi get over that fear and ch- at least try group swim lessons yeah. or swim lesson in general, I think it could definitely help them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you talk about having kids too, um, to, to then teach your kids and, and give them that knowledge as well. Yeah. Um, no matter your age. Cause I know, you know, I have friends who learn to swim very late in life. And, and they were so embarrassed by that. And so, um, you know, I think of one friend specifically and, you know, I went with her and we went and she learned how to swim and she's not going to like go for open water swims someday or something, but she knows what to do now. Um, and so no matter your age, it doesn't matter whether you are a mom with a six month old, like go to the class, or if you are the mom of a six month old and you need to learn, go to the class. Yeah. I didn't learn how to swim until I was 13. I remember going to parties when I was young and wearing a life jacket. I was one of those kids. Like, I I remember that. So, do you remember why? Like, was it intentional or was it just, it just didn't happen until that? Uh, My parents tried to put me in swim lessons when I was young, and I think I was a brat, and it just didn't go very well. (laughs) Um, I don't think it went very well. Um, And then they even tried to teach me again when I was a little bit older, and I was still in a brat stage. It just didn't (laughs) change. Um, So, eventually, I think I was 12 or 13. And kind of just got thrown in the water um, at the time and just learned, not just thrown in. Oh, it was I was just like, what? Me. <laughs> yes. No, my parents were there, oh. but they, 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 they just taught me. They're like, time. yeah, it's time to learn. Um, and again, being at a party with a life jacket, being the only one, I think it was about time to learn how to swim. Yeah, yeah, so, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then four years later, became a lifeguard and you know, spent my entire career in aquatics and overseeing it. So it's, yeah. been, it's been a joy for sure. Yeah. So I want to recap some of these really good points and really good um, takeaways for those who are watching. So 
um, see something, say something. I feel like I want to keep saying that so that it sticks in your brain if you're watching. And yes. so it sticks in my brain as well. Yeah. Um, but then also, you know, go and take the lessons. Take advantage of these programs that are available to you at the Y because it sounds like no matter where you are or no matter what your financial situation, there's an option and so important for you to be safe. So um, their website, ymcacva.org. Yep, um, and the aquatics program is what you are looking for if you're searching around the site. Um, and call. There's a contact form. Um, and I think that that can just, that can be the easy thing for sometimes. They either look for a search button yep. or a contact form. Because some people just don't want to search your yep. website. And so yep. do it. Like, don't let something stand in the way of you making this decision. Yeah. Um, anything you want to leave us with, anything you want, like be vigilant or whatever you want to leave. Yeah, well, you think about apartment complexes and different things like that. They have signs up that say, swim at your own risk. There's no lifeguard on duty. Not that you shouldn't swim yeah, in those I areas, but you have to be more vigilant in those areas because there isn't a professional certified person to watch you as you swim. Yeah. So swimming with a buddy, swimming with other individuals and just making sure you're paying attention. Um, you know, ponds, rivers, creeks, the rocks are slippery, the hills. Mm -hmm. Just be careful because some parts of the creek can be deep, especially for young kids. So just being mindful of where you're at when you're around water. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there's always a lifeguard on duty when you normally go to a pool or water pa a water park. But don't rely on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are distractions out there nowadays and things like that. So again, see something, say something. You don't just mm -hmm. want to count on one person. If there's multiple counselors around or parents, you know, birthday party, have multiple people watch, watch the kids. Yeah. I feel like when I go other places, it's hard for me to have fun when it's the aquatic. You're because you're on. <laughs> yeah. Always watching the kids and just making sure they're not running, slipping and falling. If I see a kid start to struggle a little bit, I'm like, I'm on my toes. Yeah. No, that's so, so good. It's so good. And I feel like, you know, this is such a great, we live in an incredible community. Um, Lynchburg, Bedford, I think of even like our Danville, Gretna yeah, area. surrounding areas. We have such a great community. It's really, really family oriented. Um, it's safe. And so that taking it that one step further of like really looking out for each other, I think that that is pretty incredible. And it's a life skill. Yeah. Like it really is. And you'll learn it. You'll have it for the rest of your life. Yeah. So I think and it's it turned very... into a career for you. Yes, so exactly. That could happen you too. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. You could become an Olympian too. Exactly. That happens. And how cool is that to watch right now? I'm loving it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I hope that you take some of these key um ideas, nuggets, write them down, teach your kids, um, and check out the YMCA CBA website. Um, and we hope you'll join us next time on And So Much More.